This is our frost proof hose bib. It's frost proof because it shuts off up here when you turn the handle. And it's at an angle so when you shut it off the water drains out of it. So it's here in the warm house where it can't freeze. There's no water in here. If you leave your hose on in the winter time, with a, anyway, if it can't drain, it'll freeze and it'll break, split. You don't know it till spring when you go to use it again and you turn it on and it sprays water into the wall of your house and you shut it off and it's not leaking anymore because it's shut off way in here. So when we install these dumb things, I tighten this nipple up a little bit tighter than this is going to get tightened up. So when you unscrew it later when it breaks, this comes out. It's real hard to put Teflon tape on a female thread, the inside. You can put it on the outside of something, that's how you want to seal it because there's no way to look and see if it's dripping after you reinstall one in the wall. They're a nightmare, I hate them. I tell people I'm sick and I can't do it. <laughs> And I avoid doing it because you shut the water off to the house, you go down and you get the right length of things and they're all different. They're just a real pain. So we've installed the drop ear 90, screwed it on, and I'm going to stick this in here and tighten it up. But let's put a little bit of goop on here. Okay, so I put a little bit of pipe dope on the threads. That was too much. And I'll put a little Teflon on it. And this is my, you don't have to go this far. You could use just pipe dope or just Teflon. You want the Teflon to squish that pipe dope, put too much on there. But I've noticed this takes way longer. And I get paid more, the longer it takes. No, not seriously though, I, if, I, if I do this, I never have a leak. It seems like, of course that's not 100% true. Now even though the residential building code doesn't have much to say about how many hose bibs you got to put in or where they should be located, you got to think carefully and just make sure that you have them where you need them, that the water lines are sized adequately to provide enough flow, and even though the code does not specify how many or where, it does specify that all the bibs be frost proof. It doesn't freeze much here, but they're good insurance when it does. Let me just point out though that this is one of the big advantages to building your house on a crawl space rather than a concrete slab on grade. Adding hose bibs later is a whole bunch less trouble when you can crawl underneath your floor. Right. Like, what are you why doing? are you using that thing? <laughs> I love it. I don't care little stuff as quick as problems. Plus you got a you got a built in hammer in your hand just That's in right. case you need a See how that's a little bit crooked? I did that for my brother. <laughs> so I'm going to get that started. And we'll uh, pull this back. So when I tighten up that hose bib from outside, it'll pull taut. Is that a word? Sometimes you have to get a little creative when you're installing the blocking to support these guys. I can't even remember how we did this stuff before screw guns and especially cordless drill drivers took over so much of construction. The takeaway is this though, however you fasten it in place, just make sure it is bulletproof because it is one expensive disaster if they work their way loose later. This little washer here is tapered to give you the grade that it's supposed to have. Use a galvanized screw and my long screwdriver bit is for this. You haven't seen much about this water heater yet, but you will. It's not actually going to be installed until the drywall is all in and painted when the plumbing fixtures are going in, and we will go into it in depth then. This tankless technology is one of the places that energy efficiency is almost painless, 
and a nice return on your investment begins immediately. The idea is that these tankless heaters save energy all the time by not keeping 50 gallons of water piping hot all of the time. The water is heated as it is needed, as it flows through this gas-fired unit. We were careful to get one with a big enough output capacity that nobody should ever be disappointed by a lukewarm shower. Now Phil will be giving the details on how this beast actually works in another video that will be coming up pretty soon. And, full disclosure, we bought this thing, but we did receive a pretty substantial discount. The details about the cost of this water heater are available for supporters of our channel. And if you would like more information about how to access the costs of the work that you've been watching in this series, please click the link in the notes below. You don't want to quench a joint by pouring cold water on it. It's the two metals shrink at different rates. Okay, so you can understand how that could break a bond. And it's not like break it so it just leaks, but it, it, uh, what do you call that when it, uh, compromises the, the pure, so it's also called screwing it up. Yeah, don't screw it up. So anyway. That little booger hanging on the bottom, but nobody really cares. Uh, yeah, that's the sign of poor workmanship. <laughs> it's my signature. Soldering copper, or sweating it in place as it is known, is a fascinating and ancient way to join metals. In fact, according to Wikipedia five minutes ago, it's been around for about 5,000 years. Now in a case like this, the close fit of the pipes and the cleaning effect of the flux enable the surface tension of the melted solder itself to pull the material towards the higher temperature using capillary action. Fascinating indeed. This is the last plumbing video you're going to see for a while, and it's for the natural gas lines. In our house, the cooktop, the water heater, and the dryer are all going to use natural gas. Phil's running the gas to these locations with what is known as black iron pipe. This just means that it's made out of mild steel and it is not galvanized. This material is a lot less friendly to install than the PVC or the PEX that you saw for the drains and the water. The threads are cut right in to the steel pipe and then they thread right into the steel fittings. Pipe threads are not like the threads on the nuts and bolts in a car, for instance. They're tapered and they get tighter and tighter the farther in they're turned. This technology has been around for a long time and it's still a really great way to do this sort of thing even though it is less plumbing than pipe fitting. Phil has an electric pipe cutting and threading machine. You know, it sits on three legs and it's got a real torquey electric motor, but our supply house is close by, so it's cheaper to let them make the cuts and cut the threads. Gas pipe doesn't have to be as tight as water pipe without it leaking, it seems like. You know, instead of just totally gooping this stuff on, then it gets all over your hands because it squeezes out and then every time you touch a, a piece, it just makes a mess. So often I'll just, you know, half an inch worth makes for a little cleaner day. See how it just rolls it forward, 90% of it. The space between the threads and that is a few nano 
tenths of nothing, you know. So all that stuff you put on just gets squeezed out, and all this stuff is just messy that's left over. See, by not, it all gets shoved up to the next thread you didn't touch. That's anyway, it doesn't matter. That's a really good It's just tip. that I don't, can't take dirt. <laughs> so there is a, a tape product that can be used, but this is just plain better, you're saying? Yeah, you can just use Teflon tape, I suppose. It all comes down to, can you afford to play with the leak? You don't have time. This stuff kind of seals up better than Teflon, I think. We've got 172 and 9 sixteenths. 172 and 9 sixteenths. Okay, remember that. Got it. 15 more degrees. Okay, uh, just a little more. Yeah, that's probably only about 5 sixteenths of actual embed where it's sitting there now. Well, that's going to screw out an eighth or more. Yeah, four. yeah. Never do as I say, not as I do. Mm -hmm. You always have a backup wrench on the fitting and you tighten the pipe into a backed up fitting. We're backing up a pipe, so we're putting extra pressure on that rather than this joint. Differential pressures are different. Oh. It doesn't matter a lot, but it's just something to point out. I'm not sure I understood it. Okay, so right now, we're tightening two fit two things at the same time. Yes. And you can't judge how tight it is oh, with a wrench okay. unless you just do one at a time. Oh, I see. All right. All right. And I don't know. There's probably some somebody out there that'll tell you why exactly. But it's I think what do you call that? Good practices. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Just don't do it. It's rehearsal. Just don't do everything I do. Way down yonder, we have that elbow pointing this way just because I'm too fat to fit in the corner to tighten everything up. So we tighten up these fittings at each end, and we want them both to look straight down really good so we won't have trouble screwing the pipes in from underneath. We lay it on a flat floor, floor and make sure that both of them are pointing down. That's an easy way to get two fittings to look the same way. It's laid on a flat surface. Cut and I are going to attempt to start the threads at that end into that elbow and tighten everything up in a nice comfortable area and when we're done we'll just shove this pipe that way and the pipe itself will be a helper wrench we'll also put a pipe wrench on the fitting itself because you don't want to put pressure on the threaded end of the pipe and use it as a wrench it'll just be a helper and we have a couple holes in the floor theoretically lining up with these two fittings we've got our fingers crossed and here we go Cutting in. I can't believe it started already. It usually takes four or five hours to get that to start. They make these brushes half inch too short and then they bend them so you can only use a half of the pipe dope. It's a marketing thing. It's really sloppy so it makes life easier. But if it walks too tall. Are you going to drop it? Yeah. There's some chandelier down there. This 
this for our gas test. Okay. that makes that angle. So we made a swing joint where an elbow and an elbow are stuck together and that'll swing to any angle you want. And it goes back to digging a ditch with a funny angle and you use a swing joint. Get any angle you want. Oh, maybe we gotta pull that. So good. <laughs> the whole entire turn. Really? That's all I care about. There's nothing involved here. It's... But it's not there. Okay, this, you could bend it out of the way to throw a drill in there or bend it. Blinked on. The inspector will not pass this if it leaks. But trust me, Phil doesn't want it to leak either. So it's worth carefully testing each joint with soapy water. The system has to hold the pressure, no leaks allowed. If there are leaks, you basically have to tear the whole system apart to get back to the leaky fitting. Very time consuming. So if you're gonna do this sort of thing, use lots of pipe dope, get a couple of big wrenches, and make everything nice and tight. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Let me to hold something. Oh, I know. This blue stuff is really good, but it gets in your clothes and it don't come out. See, uh I was worried this was going to be another all day without it being done. Uh, yeah, actually, that's great. Do that. We run all the gas pipe. It's all screwed together pretty tight. We're going to put some air pressure to it. It's all capped off on the ends. And the inspector wants to look at this gauge with air pressure on it when he comes to inspect it. So... I don't know which way this guy's supposed to go. Get all this down. Okay, there's 22 pounds. We're gonna put 25 pounds in it. Come back in a few minutes and look at it. We're going to put soap on every joint all through the system and see if they get a bubbles going on. That's how we're testing for leaks. The gas pipe is only under, you know, ounces of pressure. Very little pressure on it compared to a water pipe. Sometimes you don't have to screw it down nearly as tight as you would a water pipe, screwing it together. But, very few unions in the system. I don't like to ever put a union where you can't access it. Vibration makes a union leak more than a regular fitting does. So, if you had a leak, you have to take the whole son of a gun apart to find that one spot. That's why. When I put it together, I tightened it pretty tight. Yeah, the uh, lower pace, you know. <laughs> <laughs>